Operation Confidence proudly presents America's Invisible Heroes Talk Radio Show. Tune in weekly on Sundays from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Pacific Time with your host, Consuelo Mackey, co-host, Air Force veteran Matt Davidson, announcers Taylor Marcella and Brooke Gadetti, U.S. Army veteran and entertainment segment host, Charles Whitehead, U.S. Army veteran and strategies for host segment host, Dr. Kathy Cash, U.S. Army veteran and lifeline for women veterans segment host, Martha Elena Varela, National Director of Faith Services, Chaplain, and Veterans in Recovery segment host, Anthony Akinfora, and U.S. Air Force veteran and incarcerated to success segment host, Kevin Lewandowski. For more information or to be a guest on our show, email info at operationconfidence.org. Operation Confidence, America's invisible hero, invisible hero. Operation Confidence is a grassroots nonprofit. The organization's mission is to provide stable housing for veterans who have experienced homelessness, as well as providing a wide range of supportive services. To help accomplish our goal, a successful landowner has donated land for the project, a world-renowned architect has offered to design the houses, and construction classes from the local community colleges will take part in building the houses. Your support and donations are needed. To get involved, please visit our website at www.operationconfidence.org or email info at operationconfidence.com. Okay. Well, welcome, everyone. And thank you for tuning in to America's Invisible Heroes, a show that is dedicated to our veterans and their families. Yes, I'm your host, Consuela Mackey, Executive Director of a grassroots nonprofit organization called Operation Confidence. Operation Confidence was created to provide a platform for our veterans to be able to share heartfelt stories, resources, and challenges. No, I'm not a veteran, but my heart goes out to our American heroes, especially those with disability and experience homelessness. Now, American Invisible Heroes Talk Radio Show now has a new format. Periodically, I'll say once every other week or once a month, we allow our co-hosts to come on with the guests. So we're going to let the board member and announcer, Taylor Marcella, introduce our co-host for today, and we'll go from there. We have U.S. Army Reserve veteran, board member Charles Whitehead. He is an entertainment host and investigating, along with Air Force veteran Joshua Irwin and his monthly segment, Veterans Elder Abuse. Okay, Charles, would you take it away as, as tomorrow being Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday? Uh, let's see here. It is. Um, is that what, uh, hold on, I, I lost something here. So tomorrow is Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday. I don't have what I'm supposed to have right in front of me, um, but it's not the Black History stuff I'm not going to talk about, is it? No, it's texting, Charles. Mm-hmm. I know. Let's see. Do you have that in front of you, Taylor? I do not. Hold but on. I can go to the Black History. Do that um, first, and then I will come back with it. Yes. Sorry. Okay. No worries. Uh, because Black History is the shortest month of the year, America's Invisible Hero wants to get a jump start on the holiday by informing our viewers and listeners about outstanding Black inventors who you may not be aware of. Why February was chosen as Black History Month? Well, February was chosen primarily because the second week of the month coincides with the birthdays of both Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. Lincoln was influential in the emancipation of slaves, and Douglas, a former slave, was a prominent leader in the abolitionist movement, which fought to end slavery. 
Lincoln and Douglas were each born in the second week of February, so it was traditionally a time when African Americans would hold celebrations in honor of emancipation, Kaplan said. Douglas's exact date of birth wasn't recorded, but he can but he came to celebrate it on February 14th. Thus, Woodson created Negro History Week around two birthdays as a way of commemorating the Black past, according to ASALH. Forty years after Ford <coughs> formally recognized Black History Month, it was Barack Obama, the nation's first Black president, who delivered a message of his own from the White House, a place built by slaves. February was chosen primarily because the second week of the month, or again, and that's why it was chosen in February. Um, 40, yeah, and then that is that for Black History Month. Okay. Yes, and so thank you, Taylor. And uh, today, tomorrow being uh, Martin Luther King's birthday officially, it, um, it's often referred to as MLK Day. Uh, it's a federal holiday in the United States making the birthday of Martin Luther King Jr. It is observed on the third Monday of January each year, and he was born 1929. King actually, birth his actual birthday is January the 15th, which is 1929, fell on a Tuesday. The, uh, the holiday is similar to holidays set under the Uniform Monday uh, Holiday Act. The earliest Monday for this holiday is January 15th, and the latest is January 21st. Martin Luther King, of course, you know, he was the chief spokesperson for uh, nonviolent activism in the civil rights movement, and uh, which protested in discrimination of federal state law. The campaign, uh, he campaigned for a federal holiday in King's, I mean, the campaign for a federal holiday in King's honor began soon after his assassination in 1968. President Ronald Reagan signed the holiday into law in 1983, 1983, and it was first observed three years later on January 20th, 1986. At first, some states resisted observing the holiday as such, giving it uh, alternative names or combining it with other ho holidays. It was officially observed in all 50 states for the first time in 2000. Now, that's a lot, you know. Martin Luther King did a lot to uh, advance, uh, you know, um, civil rights and all of these things. So, you know, the man has to be recognized. You know, we can't we can't be overlooking it. You know, that, uh, and, and people, it's un, it's a shame, but uh, to this day, some people would uh, uh, would still don't know why we have that holiday. But you know, we do now. It's crazy. So. Let me talk about the black inventors. All right, we have black inventors who were also less involved in patenting activity between 1870 and 1940, during times of lynchings, race riots, and segregation laws in the United States. There were also the black creators who came up with innovations that did necessarily, uh, that didn't necessarily fit the traditional ideals of inventiveness. For much of our history, when we think about the word invention, it's sort of uh, frightened, uh, freighted with uh, these white Eurocentric uh, notions of uh, what that means, says Eric Hintz, a historian with the Lamelson Center for the Study of Invention and Innovation at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. Often, the traditional definition of invention is something like a machine that saves human labor or animal labor that does some task uh, more efficiently. That kept certain innovations by black people from being recognized by the patent system. The patent system is built on this model that basically assumes innovation is uh, desirable when it's tied to commercial benefit. But if it's not rooted in the community survival or the needs of society, that is not worthy of production. And we see that in the law. We see that in the law, Johnson says. There are certain types of things that are patentable and certain things that are not patentable. And that is a distinction that, uh, that I do not, that I do think leaves a lot of people out of the ecosystem. A New York DJ known as Grandmaster Flash 
pioneered the use of record turntables as an instrument by using his fingers to manipulate the sounds uh, backwards and forth to show it uh, to slow it down. He had an innovative style of mixing records and blending beats that pioneered the art of DJing, but he holds no patents. Black people have been doing lots of creative, innovative things for food says. We think about all kinds of technological, creative things within the context of uh, hip hop and music production and art in other ways. But of course, the patent office is driven by technology, by techno scientific innovation. And I think part of it is for me to open the conversation on what attentiveness is, is and can be. Let me see, I have a picture of that uh, uh, turntable. You know, when I was um, when I went to Hawaii for my when I was doing my uh, two weeks time, you know, I went to Hawaii three times with my my reserve unit, and uh, I met this guy over there, and he was a like a, a you know he was a one of the the regular army guys, but he uh, was a DJ, and so they had this DJ, um, and he never knew anything about spinning, but. But I had learned that stuff over here on my side because my cousins, I had cousins who were DJs. And uh, and I was actually do I actually DJed a club a club over there, you know, and the, and uh and I was doing all that mixing and all that stuff. And that was in 1987, the first time I went. Nin wow. uh, no, that was 1984, 85, and 86. 1987. So we went the first year, we were there for two weeks uh while they had the Olympics here. And so there the two weeks the Olympics was here in LA. Uh, we were gone. And then uh so we went through, they went for like four or five years, but I got hurt on my uh in eighty seven before my uh before time to go. But I went we went three years in a row and I was a DJ and it was, you know, and so I kinda, you know, I'm DJing in Hawaii. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, shoot, John, oh, you ain't got nothing on me. So oh, gee, <laughs> oh, gee, John, go ahead on <laughs> Okay, you show that turntable. Gonna show it now. All right, yeah. It's not. Uh, there you yeah, go. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's old school. Yeah. Old school. Yeah. He was scratching yeah. everything. Man. <laughs> yeah, you know. So I had my little. Uh, you know, that was. Uh, I still uh, have one, child. I still have one too. Oh yeah, they sell them. Now. They actually sell. Uh, you know, I saw a do-it-yourself guy was doing it on how to make one of these uh, uh, turntables. Yeah, yeah, they got it's crazy. It's USB now. You just plug it in. Yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. It is. Hey, <laughs> there you go. That's cute. Though. A lot of good information. Yes, yes. Okay, so we're moving right along here. Look like we're gonna have a, a fun but a short show today. Uh, we're gonna turn it over to Josh. You ready, Josh? Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. All, All right. right, everybody. How's everybody? Yeah. So, okay. Uh, what we're gonna discuss today is uh, veterans' elder abuse. The VHA is the largest integrated, federally funded healthcare system in the U.S. The VA census estimates that about 13 million veterans and their single surviving spouses are age 65 or older, representing about one third of the total senior population and 45.3% of the total veteran population. This number is expected to rise as the 7 million Vietnam veterans age, and we are doing that. A 2000 comparative analysis of health status and medical resource use showed that the VA patient population had poor health status, more medical conditions, and higher medical resource utilization, including more physician visits per year, more hospital admissions per year, and more days spent in the hospital per year compared with that of the general patient population. Another study determined that older veterans had higher rates of lifetime trauma exposure 
85%, and post-traumatic stress disorder symptomology secondary to combat and war zone related exposure, which is 53%. All right, VA research and elder abuse. The prevalence of elder abuse among veterans is not currently known. The 2010 GAO report stated that although it could not be determined where the allegations of abuse were widespread, hundreds of allegations of physical abuse, negle uh, neglect, and financial exploitation between 1990 and 2010 were noted. A 2006 study that examined the prevalence types and intervention intervention outcomes of elder abuse cases among a sample of veterans noted that 5.4% of evaluated veterans had a case reported on their behalf. Recent unpublished findings from chart reviews of the cases of elder abuse reported by the Providence and Durham VA MCs to their state's represent respective APS agencies between 2006 and 2012 showed 55 reported cases at two institutions during the seven year study period. Compared with national data on elder abuse prevalence, this finding suggests a significant underreporting of elder abuse within the VA healthcare system. These findings are likely concordant with the lack of reporting in the community. Nevertheless, VA research on elder abuse is scant and represents an important future research priority. In conclusion, elder abuse has long been a taboo topic. At present, there is a sense of urgency to elevate elder abuse neglect and exploitation as a national concern and a priority for HCPs, both within the VA healthcare system and community. Awareness of elder abuse and neglect needs to be highlighted for recognition and prompt intervention to follow. Intervention should include joint federal efforts to raise public awareness to the signs of elder abuse, steps to take, and how to intervene as concerned citizens. Bridges need to be connected between healthcare systems and community resources, utilizing social media and educational interventions. There also is a need for parallel campaigns geared to HCPs to ensure that veterans are being screened and elder abuse, neglect, and exploitation are being appropriately diagnosed and victims are cared for. Caregiver stress and burden also needs to be considered as elder abuse and neglect are not always intentional. And as we have seen with the research already done at the VA, most elder abuse cases can be resolved by swift recognition and timely addition of services in home in lieu of institutionalization. Discussions on elder abuse should not be feared. Rather, these conversations should be, should be between citizens as well as HCPs and their clients can be viewed as a point of advocacy for older adults. More specifically, identification of elder abuse can be improved with the implementation of elder abuse screening tools and development of a new tool to help identify at-risk veterans before abuse even occurs. Prevention can be achieved with increased education to raise awareness of elder abuse. Treatment of elder abuse should be, include the development of standard operating procedures on elderly abuse, collaboration between state and local officials, such as Department of Elderly Affairs or Adult Protective Services, utilization of medical foster homes, increase accessibility to home-based primary care and respite services, as well as the development of shelter beds in VA-associated nursing homes for victims of elder abuse. 
Lastly, additional research is needed to better understand the prevalence of elder abuse among veterans, identify those who are most at risk within the veteran population, and inform the development of evidence-based interventions. As the number of older adults grows, the need for programs and services is critical to ensure protection and support this valuable group within our society. Wow, well, that's some heavy information. And it's a shame after serving our country and growing old that we have to worry about them being abused. That's so sad. I know it's it's uh, bad enough, you know. They're they're being uh, uh, uh you know, uh, abused. Uh, so going out to wars and all of this stuff or whatever, right. and you have to come back home and, mm -hmm. and you, know, you get treated worse than the enemy does. Mm -hmm. Right, along with dealing with their own trauma. You exactly, know? you know. Yeah. You, you, you mm -hmm. know. That is so sad. Well, I think. Um, interviews and presentations such as this would bring awareness you know yeah, about yeah. some of the problems that's out there next uh, time you on we're going to have some videos to show because i've seen some that were just off oh, you know yeah. caretakers and and uh mm -hmm. nursing home veteran nursing homes i mean they literally drag those old people out beat them up mm -hmm. and, you know i mean sick just sick you know yeah. Some family members literally have cameras hidden in the room so that they can prove their case. Yeah. But other than that, it's just getting away with just beating my pro veterans to death and elders, period, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really sad. But uh, thank you, Josh, for that information. That was quite important. Yeah. Uh, okay, Charles, you want to talk about Percy? Yes, Percy LeBon Julian. It was known as the soybean chemist. Julian's first invention was coating paper with the soy protein, protein instead of a more expensive milk protein. That technique was used in a product called Aerofoam. Aerofoam smothered oil and gasoline fires by blanketing them in the soybean based by in the soy based foam. Aerofoam was adopted by the U.S. Navy and uh, saved the lives of thousands of sailors and naval airmen during World War II. However, Julian is most famous for using the soybean plant to create the synthetic hormones cortisone and physotigmine. Uh, okay, that's a, that's a good one there. Cortisone is used to treat uh, rheumatoid arthritis and uh, physotigmine. I, I, am I saying that right? Is it size, size old tigment, whatever it is, we're going to call it that today. Uh, okay, because you uh, ask me. <laughs> yeah, uh, is uh, to treat glaucoma. Julian was active in the U.S. civil rights movement, raising money for the NAACP's legal defense and education fund. I mean, that, uh, you know, that that word is something else, but I, I know what it is, you know, when they use the um, uh, blanket. Size yeah, tigment. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Pfizer Tickman. Okay. Well, you know, that works. And today, today we two two names, you know. <laughs> yeah. Taylor, did we have any yeah, picture on Percy, Julie? Or not? Um uh, you sent a couple, but I don't know who the man in the single picture is. Okay, well let's move on to you. But I have pictures for this next. Okay. Right. Okay. So mm -hmm. George Carruthers. George Carruthers, born 1939, invented the far ultraviolet camera spectrograph um, in 1969. It was plated in gold and carried abroad the Apollo 16 mission, where it was placed on the moon's surface. The camera used ultraviolet light and visible to the naked eye to capture high quality images of Earth. Carruthers' invention helped scientists to see how air pollution forms. This allowed them to develop new ways to control the air pollution. The camera also found hydrogen in deep space, which led to new ideas about the birth of stars in the universe. And so here are some pictures of the invention. Uh, this may be the one that 
Mm-hmm. That Charles, that the, that's the brother. He was a brother. Yeah, it's Black History. What we talking about? Duh. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was not. <laughs> so I'm assuming the Joshua says, Charles, says hey, Charles. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> <laughs> and then here is my guy Carruthers. Uh, uh, I will show a. What do what the I heck apologize is that? for the pixelation. This is the, um, what is it? It's the ultraviolet camera spectrograph. Okay. And I love that it's gold plated. That's the only saving grace in that. And I'm assuming this is him with right. President Barack Obama. Right. So, yeah. Kind of like a, they look like brothers, all. Yeah. A little bit. If you squint your eye, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's some great information. Oh, yeah. There were so many African Americans yeah. that contributed yeah. to our society that didn't get recognized. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, because I've seen the pictures. I remember seeing the first pictures back in the day, but mm-hmm. I didn't know it was a brother that didn't, you know, invented the yeah. camera stuff. My goodness. <laughs> Well, that's what uh, you know. Earlier, what I was talking about, you know, they, they you know, they, they they wouldn't give credit to you know where it was due back in the day. Yeah, the, yeah, you know, really. the whole racism thing that, uh, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, they just hung up on. You know what I mean? Yeah, Their brothers and sisters, even the sisters that are working in the background doing mm-hmm. stuff. You know? Right. Yeah. Right, right. But it's good to get the information out. It's always good to hear. Mm-hmm. You know, Just get it out in the mix for a long, long time since day. Oh, we got we got more of uh offer next month as well because right. it needs to be known, okay. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and our children need to know all this. You yeah, know, right, right, right. Know it, you know, so I'm glad we have that opportunity. So we're gonna wind down pretty pretty soon today, Charles. You have a funny clip. Oh yeah, uh, Miss Miss Sean sent me a clip. You know, it was oh, a, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, she said okay. She's like, I'm about you. She sent me this. So I said, and it's a good one too. Let me, let me, uh, you know. I said, okay, all right. Let's see here. Let's see here. So why are we looking at this? Because this is what she's uh I'm finna show you the video. Mr. Technician, you supposed to go straight to the video. I got oh yeah, there it is. I gotta make yeah, sure. To give him a chance. Yeah, I, don't know, I can't run I mean, the marathon race. I mean, this is the marathon. Hold it on. It ain't nice to be rushing old people. <laughs> I remember just like we practiced. Oh, hey y'all, how y'all doing over there? Y'all having fun? Y'all ready? Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> I mean, I, just like we practiced, I came just like we practiced. <laughs> oh, oh, in the front, let me get in the front. Just like we practiced, I did it. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna stay just like we practiced. I remember just like we practiced. Oh, hey y'all, how y'all doing over there? Y'all having fun? I'm ready. Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> I mean, I, just like we practice, I can't just like we practice. <laughs> oh, oh, in the front, let me get in the front. Just like we practice, I need it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's cute. <laughs> That's something that Cozy would be doing. Hey, hey, yeah, now I can't get my dog to do that shit. She be, you know, she be trying to, uh, 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 bite, bite somebody. Uh, you know, bark oh, at. Right. Cool. So I, I can, I can, you know. But I, what I do, I got her doing high fives. You know. Oh uh, really? Okay, that's cute. Yeah, you know. So maybe I will put a video tickers. You know, she she's funny because I do that. You know, my sister be, and you know, this is a funny thing too. My sister, uh, because this is her dog. You know, this is the dog that was pulling me when I broke my leg. Right. Anyway, oh. but. uh uh, my sister buys these uh, high, uh, I call it high falutin treats, you know, all of this, you know, all <laughs> yeah, homemade treats. I was like, I got that top, you know. I said, uh, you know, because I buy bread and uh, and I don't uh, eat it all, so I take the bread and I, you know, I take a, a piece of bread and 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 cut it in half or two. I call them her treats. Boy, she started watering at the mouth. Boy, I said, you know, I said. <laughs> 
I said, my sister said, you over there bumping my bumping her head. I'm like, hey, you know what? She'd be happy. You know, right. she, that's my piece of red. Huh? Yeah, uh-huh, Peter, she know this, this, this is a high for treat. She don't need all that stuff. This is red. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> like that. And then I got I sit down and I tell her, give me a high five. She give me a high yeah. five and she get, you know, it's okay. Give her a little treat. She'll do everything. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, see, so you got treat. all of this uh, gourmet <laughs> stuff. I said, yeah. Just, man, get the uh, uh, home pride, you know. <laughs> well, next time, next week we're gonna show Cozy, my dog. He's a, a an adult Maltese. When I say adult, human Maltese. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he walks on his back legs. Just walk around the house. He, uh, I yeah. him to have a dog translator <laughs> where he can hear mm-hmm. <laughs> instead walk of just barking. Like they actually like say things. He walk around like he a bear. Yeah. Yeah. You see him right here. He literally walks around. And when it's time to go out to go use the bathroom, if I don't move fast enough, he'll beat on the bed. Like, Uh hurry up, hurry up. Yeah, yeah. So these dogs, I mean, they weren't like when when my kids were growing up. They're like way intelligent now. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. When you were a kid, yeah, you know, this dog, you know, we we got to turn, we didn't turn this into the dog show, but it's good. <laughs> and, and this dog here, you know, you feed her. This dog gets, uh, she got a special diet, you know. I said, you eat better than a lot of people, you know. <laughs> you know? Exactly. She gets, she gets a, 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 a raw chicken leg, an egg, uh, oh a vitamin, uh, four baby carrots, uh, oh, a no. quarter of chicks cheese stick. Three to four ounces of yogurt. I said, you know, and, uh, some salmon oil all that time. What type of dog is yeah. it? Uh, 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 dog. Dog. For sure. He's a cattle dog. You know, yeah. he's one yeah. of those dogs that the instincts is to, you know, to, to protect and uh, yeah. rustle up the cattle. Yeah, so I take her out, and you know, and she 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 can't be a uh, you know like the dogs. People dogs be go. Oh, no, she people are. Like, lip, 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 lip. <laughs> I said, I said, I got a little cool. Her name is Ginger, so I call her Cool Joe, but I call her Cool Ginger sometimes. You know, mm. yeah. you know about Cool Joe that movie. They know what I'm talking. Yeah. about. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, wind this on out. Yes, ma'am. Before Miss Connie closes the show, I would like to encourage our viewers and listeners to visit the Operation Confidence resource page on our website at www.operationconfidence.org. Again, www.operationconfidence.org for some amazing resources. We would also like to inform our viewers and listeners about Operation Confidence Positive Redirection Team. It's a group of male and female veterans who are mentors, having overcome similar challenges and situations transitioning back into mainstream society. To be connected or become a team member, email us at info at operationconfidence.org. Again, info at operationconfidence.org. Okay, and as always, we want to remind our viewers and our listeners that the goal for the show is to raise awareness about Operation Confidence and its mission, which is to provide a wide range of supportive services, including stable housing for our veterans, especially those with a disability and, as I mentioned before, experience homelessness. So to get involved with our grassroots efforts, please send us an email at info at operationconfidence.org. That's info at operationconfidence.org. And as of today, our listeners and our viewers, Operation Confidence American Invisible Heroes have 180,000 views. That ain't so bad for an itty bitty fun informative organization that has <laughs> our radio show that's not how would you say high rated. <laughs> so we're excited about that. And of course we have I want to thank everyone for our subscriptions for us for our subscribers too. We have a hundred and thirty-five thousand subscriptions as subscribers as well. So thank you all for that. And in closing, Operation Conference of American Invisible Heroes uh, is streaming on not only um, YouTube, but on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, as well as Amazon, iHeart, Stitcher. We have our own Instagram and our own Operation Conference blog. 
So anyway, we thank you all for being here today. We want to thank our co-hosts for amazing presentation. Right. Always our, our board members, which all three of you are board members. We didn't tell the audience that this is board member day. <laughs> so yeah. we want to thank you so much. And uh, we had a great show. We'll be back next week. Minus yep. on out, Charles. All right, got to get a... Uh, mm, 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 get the fingers. You, know. you got to do your, you got to do your signature sign. Yeah, out. Indeed. All right. Now let's do this, right, everybody. We'll see you guys uh next week. Next week.